So what I'm talking about right now is corneal topography for cataract surgery patients. Preoperative corneal topography is essential for cataract surgery to get best visual outcomes with premium IOLs. The patients have more expectations since we all started using, majority of cases we are using premium IOLs and hence this becomes an important investigation. An irregular cornea can result in a wrong IOL power calculation, postoperative glare and halos, a reduced quality of vision and a wrong assessment for LRIs. So what does corneal topography before a cataract surgery additionally diagnose? It can diagnose any early cases of keratoconus, pellucid marginal degeneration, dry eye, blepharitis or myoboman gland dysfunction, an anterior basement membrane dystrophy, a Salzman's nodular keratopathy, a previous LASIK surgery, corneal scar steratium, and it can help us in planning LRIs. Many of these can, conditions can be otherwise diagnosed clinically also and may not require a topography, but any, in any busy clinical practice where, where we are, where to a cataract patient, we are just giving a few seconds for a uh, slit lamp examination and one of our optums is doing the uh, keratometry and biometry. Sometimes early, uh, some of these early conditions may be missed and they may be responsible for a, uh, a wrong IOL power calculation and some optimum results. So this was a study which was presented in uh, American Academy last year where they reviewed 20, 200 patients, 400 eyes who had a preoperative corneal topography done for both eyes and all were for cataract surgery. It was found that this topography was normal in 79% cases and abnormal in 21% cases. A borderline FFKC or pellucid was seen in 5%. FFKC was seen in 1%, keratoconus in 2%, a pellucid pattern in 1%, a superior steepening in 2%, a central flattening because of myopic refractive surgery in 4%, because of hyperopic refractive surgery, a central steepening in 1%, and a significant irregular astigmatism because of pterygium, etc., pterygium or scar, etc., in 5% cases. So following this, we conducted a study where we did uh, topographic uh, analysis in all uh, patients who were to undergo a cataract surgery, and this we did in 110 eyes. We found that there was a FFKC in 2%, keratoconus in 1%, a superior steepening in 3%, a previous uh, plat uh, a because, central flattening because of a previous myopic LASIK in 2%, in 1% because a central steepening because of uh, previous hyper, uh, hyperopic lasers, LASIK and in 10% an irregular astigmatism which was not due to keratoconus. So the topographic interpretation results showed that the eyes were normal in 81% cases but in 19% of cases they were abnormalized and these were the eyes which deserved attention before any cataract surgery. So let's see the first condition, dry eye, blepharitis, myobomian gland dysfunction, very simple condition which we may actually not pay attention to in, in, a, in a case who's going to undergo a cataract surgery. But why is it essential to treat a dry eye before cataract surgery? Because it can result in an inaccurate keratometry, a wrong eye will power calculation and especially so it is important in case of toric eye wills. Just to quote an example of a patient with cataract and dry eye. Now when a keratometry was done, it was found that on, when a topography was done, there was a 4.5 cylinder on topography. There was an amorphous kind of a pattern on uh, top of topography and uh, with somewhere steep and somewhere dry. This was uh, uh, in, in both right as well as left eye, uh, somewhere steep and somewhere flat. And this was planned for cataract surgery. Now when, was, when, a, keratom, when a, a biometry was done, it was found that the power was uh, 23.5 power was sorry 23 and uh, and again as you can see on keratometry there was a, a cylinder of 4.5 so I, we would have planned him for toric IOLs but this patient was simply treated for dry eye with lubricant steroids and cyclosporin for two weeks and the power changed to 24.5 and as you can see the cylinder was that was now detected was one so uh, as I said, in a busy clinical practice, when the optum does this thing, uh, 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 was a, for a biometry for, a, uh, for most of us, uh, we may sometimes miss such simple things resulting in wrong eye will power calculations and what a disaster it would have been if we had implanted a toric eye in this patient. So this is another such case where the power, the keratometry was not that grossly altered. That was a gross case that I showed, but this is another case where there was a difference of one scene after dry eye treatment. So that difference of one is also very significant in any case who's undergoing a premium IOL. Another case, a 44-year-old patient, patient with a cataract and wanted a multifocal IOL. 
Now, is she a candidate for multifocal libel? Now, when uh, the topography was done, it was found that a uh, cornea appeared a little uh, thinner than normal. 474 was the uh, was the thickness, and in the center, it was a little flatter than normal. Now, the, now we started seeing this. There was some suspicion in our mind, and we started asking more questions to the patient. And then she gave a history that she had undergone a, undergone a LASIK surgery previously. So many a times you will find that the patients will not give you a history of undergoing a LASIK uh, before, and this again will result in a wrong IOL power uh, calculation. It is only when you do a topography that you may realize that yes, this patient has undergone a refractive surgery previously, and. A patient who has undergone a refractive surgery is the one who does is the one who does not wear, want to wear glasses. And in such a patient, when you implant a multifocal eye well with a wrong power calculation, it's going to be a disaster. So, in multi, uh, when we are talking of multifocal eye wells, another place where topography has a big role is angle kappa. Angle kappa is the angle between the optical axis and the visual axis, and this is again which is something which can be measured on op scan. And uh, in hyperopes, especially, there's a large angle kappa, and whenever the angle kappa is large, more than four degrees, it would be better not to implant a uh, multifocal eye well because obviously your results will be suboptimal. Now, for keratoconus, keratoconus is not a dire flag as like in LASIK. It is not that in, if it's a keratoconus, you will not do a cataract surgery. But if you can diagnose an early keratoconus on topography you can, or on op scan, you can at least give a visual prognosis to your patient. And if there's a skewed astigmatism that you pick up, then you, find, then you may decide on no LRIs, which you may be planning otherwise. So this is just a case where a keratoconus uh, was picked up on um, OPSCAN and the prognosis given to the patient. So another condition is pellucid degeneration, uh, where there is a if it's a if it's a very obvious pellucid de degeneration with a, a peripheral flattening that you will easily diagnose. But sometimes when it is subtle, you may miss it and you may actually see it on a topography. There you will see a vertical negative bow tie and because of the uh, peripheral steepening you will find that the lower half of the bow is surrounded by a C-shaped claw with a, uh, because of the higher corneal curvature. So uh, an important condition is in, uh, when you are uh, when you are planning to whether or not you should uh, plan to implant a toric IOL for pellucid. These are more challenging conditions because they will not get very optimum results when you, uh, when you implant a toric IOL. So you may decide either not to implant or you have to extensively counsel. Especially so because unlike uh, keratoconus which is non-progressive in the older age group, uh, pellucid degeneration is a progressive condition in the older age group. So whatever toric you may have implanted, the result may go haywire a little later. So these are the uh, this is a condition which definitely needs attention and it needs ex extensive counseling if you are planning a toric IOL for such a patient. Then anterior basement membrane dystrophy is another thing which can be diagnosed. A self-spin nodular dystrophy, if there are obvious nodules, obviously you can see it. But if otherwise, you may sometimes, as I said, if it's not it's subtle, you may again miss it and you can detect it on uh, topography. All you have to do in such cases is to debride the epithelium. And if you see two to three months later, you will find that it has healed well and in fact, your the vision may have improved and you may not require to do a cataract surgery. Then scars at pterygium, we all know that uh, pterygium can result in an astigmatism. This is one such case which is showing which, which uh, there was a significant astigmatism and once the pterygium was removed, uh, the astigmatism uh, decreased and then we carried out the cataract surgery. Now another place where uh, this uh, topography helps is L L LRI planning. If there is an irregular bow tie with a larger balloon on one side, LRI can be made longer on the side of the larger balloon. If it's a skewed astigmatism, LRIs are not opposite, that, but they would be at the tip of the astigmatism. If it's an irregular astigmatism, you may think of deferring LRIs also. And if there is a discrepancy in topographic and refractive astigmatism, then this means that this may be a lenticular or a posterior corneal surface astigmatism and you may think of deferring LRIs. So in summary, corneal topography is an essential preoperative investigation and in the coming times it should become an official standard uh, preoperative workup for all cataract surgery patients. Thank you.